This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Matt already asked about uh, developers, so I'll ask: Has anyone ever built a plugin before in the room? Awesome. Uh, anyone want to build a plugin? Great, you're in the right place. So, uh, my name's Nelson. Uh, I'm a, dev- a designer at a company called HubSpot here in Cambridge. Uh, and over the past eight or nine months, I've been working on a plugin called Lead-In. So over the past couple months, we've kind of encountered all of these pitfalls. And uh, these pitfalls lead to like a lot of wasted time and effort. So hopefully by the end of this talk, this will be you because you'll learn how to avoid that stuff. So just a little bit of background about uh, us. Uh, our plugin, we started working on this back in October 2013. At this point, we have a little over 5,000 downloads, and we have a 4.5 star rating, so uh, we gotta get that last half star back. So you can listen to 90% of the stuff I say, I guess. Uh, (laughs) So how did this start? Well, back in uh, October, I had been at uh, this company, HubSpot, which is a software company, uh, for about three years doing product design, and uh, I got a phone call from a number I didn't know, so I said, okay picked it up, uh, and it was the VP of engineering of HubSpot. And I said, this is weird, he's never called me on the phone before. So he said, Nelson, we got this new project uh, we want you to work on. Uh, we're hiring this guy, his name is Andy Cook. You guys have been fr- friends for a while, so you want to work on him with it? And I said, yeah, that sounds awesome. So I said, what's the project? And he said, well, we want you to build something on WordPress. We don't exactly know what it is or what it does yet, but you guys are going to figure that out. And I said, OK. <laughs> And, he, and I said, well, do you have any like, advice for us as we go into this? And this is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, OK, pretty straightforward. Uh, so going into this project, Andy and I knew we didn't want to waste a lot of time. We wanted to minimize our chance of failure. Uh, we really want to try to get things right, uh, especially since this is what we started with back in October. We had written no code. We didn't have any contacts. We didn't know anyone like Matt in the WordPress community. Uh, we had, you know, no email addresses. We didn't have a big list we could blast. And I myself had zero startup experience. I had never built a product from nothing. So this was kind of daunting. So where did we start? Well, uh, we started with what we knew, right? That's a pretty good place to start. Uh, so I had been working, like I said, at HubSpot for about three years. Uh, so I was pretty familiar with marketing software and small businesses and building software for them. Andy, uh, previous to HubSpot, was at a startup called Rentabilities that he worked on for a few years, and he built that entire thing on WordPress, like millions of posts in the WordPress table, if you want to chat with him about that after. It's a good story. Uh, so it kind of made sense for us to do this, right? Let's build marketing software for WordPress. So we did what any good product people do. We got in a room and did this, right? We went crazy on a whiteboard for like three hours, locked ourselves in there, uh, came up with a bunch of crazy hairbrand ideas, some crazier than others. Uh, and we got really excited, right? And we wanted to do this. We wanted to just start coding, right? Uh, we, we said, yeah, well, I'm so excited. We got all these ideas. Let's go build stuff. So then we kind of had this voice in the back of our head, right? So we said, hmm, maybe we should rethink this a little bit. Like, if we did go out and build some of these crazy ideas we had, would anyone actually care? And the only way to find, found out, to find that, that out was to go talk to people, right? So this kind of led us to our first lesson, which is when you're starting out with plugins, Start with people and the problems you're going to solve for them and not the product. Because with the product, as you, as you go and as you build, is going to change. The ideas you have are going to change. Uh, you're going to iterate a lot. But the people whose problems you're solving are usually going to stay the same, and their problems are always going to remain no matter what products you build. Uh, because you know the most important thing to remember is this. Obviously, you are not the user. The only way to know what the user wants is to do this. Talk to people. Talk to those users. Uh, and it's, it's really not that hard. Uh, you may be asking me, like, where do I find these people you're talking about? Well, uh, they're out there. Uh, so what, here's a couple of things we did. Uh, I posted on Facebook, right? There's people there. So I just posted, hey, anyone out there using WordPress? Can I talk to you for a little while? And uh, I got a bunch of people who respond to this. And I think I got two phone calls out of that. Another thing we did was post on Reddit. Reddit is like this huge wealth of information on the internet. It's like the, one of the best places to do customer research, surprisingly. Uh, 
So we just went on the WordPress subreddit uh, and just posted stuff, and, or posted a post and said, hey, we want to talk to people about stuff. And we got all these great responses like, oh, yeah, awesome. Sounds interesting. We'd love to help you out. And got five phone calls out of that. Uh, another thing I did was just cold email people. So I found a bunch of uh, WordPress consultants and developers and just sent them this cold email, right? Just asking them to talk that I was working on a, in a two-man team. I sent this email to 10 people. I got eight responses and five phone calls. So uh, we got a bunch of responses. Actually, this is one of the responses I got to this email I sent out. Uh, I like this. I did something similar. It failed, but I still think it'd be a good idea. Uh, and actually, one thing I got out of this was I emailed a guy named Dan Norris, who's a kind of a WordPress blogger and entrepreneur. And he actually invited me on his podcast because I emailed him, right? So that was cool. And I got even more people from that because uh, a lot of people saw that and wanted to help me out. So the next lesson we, we learned in all of this was that people are nice when you're trying to solve their problems. Like it, it kind of seems like at first pass that it's like spammy to like blast cold emails to people. But at the end of the day, I was trying to help them and I was asking for their feedback, right? People love to help. People love to give their opinions and give their feedback, right? Because a lot of developers don't listen to people usually. So it's, it's, it's refreshing when it, like people building stuff are actually asking for people's feedback on stuff. Uh, so once we had all these people, uh, I think we got, did about 20 or 30 interviews with people about WordPress stuff. So once we did get them on the phone and start talking to them, we focused on these three things. What, what are their problems? What are their frustrations? And what complaints do they have? about uh, the current software they're using. So like here are actual questions we ask people or like examples of questions we would ask. Uh, like what is your current marketing process like? Uh, what tools are you using currently on WordPress? And how could they be better? Uh, so after doing a bunch of these interviews, we got a bunch of stuff like this. So this is an actual quote from someone. Uh, I know Google Analytics can do many things. It's a powerful tool, but I just wanted to know which pages my leads went through before and after they filled out the contact form. Uh, here's another one. It would be helpful for me to know what content the user contacts me and visited so I can ascertain their interests. So in doing all these interviews, we kept hearing like that same thing over and over again. We said, hmm, that's interesting. Sounds like a problem, right? So this problem, I don't know where my leads are coming from. Uh, so we heard that over and over again. and, and and like we kind of thought initially, and I'm sure you're probably thinking, like, doesn't this stuff exist? Like, aren't these things, don't those things do that thing, right? Uh, the answer is, yeah, they do exist, but unfortunately for a lot of small businesses and, and a lot of WordPress users, they're too complicated or too expensive, or it's like really hard to set up custom reports and Google Analytics and stuff. So like the true value we could provide as a WordPress plugin and, and, and the true value you can provide as WordPress plugin authors is that you can oftentimes just get like, do this one-click install, right? You just press the install button, then you have tracking code on every page of the site. And you have all this built-in awesomeness that you can you know, build on top of. So another thing we learned here was that you shouldn't underestimate simplicity, especially when you're starting out. Just because something seems like really obvious and, oh, that's already solved, like that's not a problem, doesn't mean that you know, the people you're trying to build this stuff for is, are, are gonna be like super pumped up and like, mi like mind blown. Like, oh yeah, that sounds amazing, right? So. So at this point, we had found all these people. We had talked to a bunch of people. We had found this really uh, deep problem that people had. So at this point, you know, the, our instinct was to do this, right? We're like, yeah, let's do it. But uh, again, we had that nagging voice in the back of our head. So we decided, let's, let's slow down. Let's take this one step further. So uh, building stuff is fun and it's awesome, but it also takes a lot of time. Uh, so in order to show people what this product would look like, we did mock-ups, right? So mock-ups are really cheap. They're really easy to do. They're really fast. I can do a mock-up in like a day. Like I can do like 10 mock-ups, right? And we can show people a bunch of stuff without actually building or writing a single line of code. So here's an actual, here's like the actual mock-up. One of them I actually showed, we showed people. Uh, so this was just like an email notification that you would get when someone filled out a form. Uh, with like the f form fields and then if you scroll down you would see like the page that they viewed before and after. Uh, so once you do this, once you have all these mock-ups, you, you can show people and listen to what they say, right? So uh, it's, it's, it's always like the instinct when you show people to like tell them why it's awesome and to tell them what they're going to do with it. But really what you have to do here is try to speak as little as possible and let people tell you what's interesting about what you're showing them. Uh, otherwise, you're kind of guiding what they're what they're trying what they're going to say, and uh, 
So we did that with this and we showed this to people and people started saying this, right? Which is nice. We like that. Uh, that's a good thing to hear. Uh, and so when you are listening to people talk about what you're showing them and when they are giving you feedback, you're, you're probably going to get uh, a range of reactions from like, I don't care about this to this is so amazing, right? And there's also this like gray area in the middle where it's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. That area is the valley of death for feedback. You do not want that type of feedback. Uh, the reason, reason being, if someone says they don't care, you learn something, right? You know they don't want it and you know you shouldn't waste time doing it, right? If they say it's amazing, that's good. You know that you should keep doing that. But if they're in this middle ground where it's like, man, I don't know, like that sucks because you don't know, you don't learn anything from that. So when, when you're, uh, so when you are showing people stuff, you want to look for extreme reactions to what you're showing them. Uh, you, you try to force people one way or the other, if you can. Uh, so that's all my part of the presentation. Andy's going to come up and talk about actually building this thing. Thanks. Can everyone hear me? Is it loud enough? In the back? All right, cool. All right, so uh, Nelson, up to this point, has basically talked about our process to figure out what to build. And uh, based off of those mock-ups and finding those amazing reactions, we finally had a plugin that we knew we were going to build, right? We get to do it. We get to put on our glitch mob, like our EDM music, put on our noise-canceling headphones, go into the cave, like drink a bunch of Red Bulls and code, right? We're just going to code all the things, right? Actually, no. That's uh, the, the wrong reaction, and you'd think at this point we'd be ready to go, but it's actually not a good idea just to jump in and code stuff, because if you don't plan at all, you can end up like six months down the road building something that no one wants on the other end, even after you've done all this work, because you just add feature after feature, oh, I need this setting, I need this, I need that. So instead, uh, we decided to apply the Lean Startup framework so we could build less and we could learn more. And uh, has anyone ever heard of Lean Startup before? Uh, so, I, like Nelson said, I built a startup on top of WordPress for three years, and we use this religiously. And the basic gist of the framework is come up with a list of assumptions that you have, things you believe to be true, but you haven't necessarily proven out yet. Do a bunch of validate, validation on that by running very lean, methodical experiments, and then you come out the other end learning, right? It's almost like the scientific method and startups had a kid. Uh, so we uh, came up with a list of assumptions for lead-in, and uh, the biggest one we had was that people would actually install a plugin to track where their leads came from. You know, people install millions of plugins a day on the WordPress repo, but we didn't know if they would install our plugin. And then we didn't know if we built this thing for them, would they actually be like, oh, right, I want this. Take the time, go install it on their site, and then look at the data. So. Um, the, big, the tool that the Lean Startup basically uses is the minimum viable product. Uh, the gist of it is it boils down to what's the minimum thing I can ship in order to validate that people actually want, the pro want me to solve the problem that I have, or that uh, they have. So we wanted to apply to WordPress and do the minimum viable plugin, right? What's the minimum plugin we can build in order to prove that people will install it on their site so that they can track their users? So we sat down and brainstormed and came up with a list of things we needed to build, right? So initially we thought we wanted, or we had to build a form builder because how are people going to collect their contacts, right? We needed a place to store them all so they could see them. We needed people to go and be able to look into the timeline from that mock-up Nelson showed. We probably needed a bunch of settings like, oh, where should we send their email notifications? And of course the email notification mock-up that we originally showed to people. Uh, but then we started thinking about it, and we had that nagging voice in the back of our head, don't screw it up, and uh, we started asking ourselves, what can we take out? Like, what don't we have to build, right? And we applied one of my favorite quotes uh, for startups, which is, perfection is achieved not when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. And we just kept asking ourselves this question, what can we not build? And I had been coding for three years, like 80 hours a week, nonstop for my startup and like I was just sick of building stuff and I wanted to just like get out of building stuff and actually solve people's problems by building the least amount of stuff possible. So we uh, went and looked back at our original mock-up and we were like, oh, this is actually pretty good, right? And it gets delivered by email into their inbox. And we applied this mock-up and realized we didn't need to build any of the other stuff. We didn't have to build a form builder because most WordPress sites come with a theme that has a form in it 
for like Contact Form 7 has like 17 million installs now and a lot of people use Gravity Forms. And all these sites had forms on their site already. Let's not make people change their behavior. Let's just hook into the forms they already have with some code. Then we realized, oh, well, we don't actually have to build a list of contacts because if we send the email notification, the inbox is basically a database, right, of all the contacts. We don't need a timeline because it's already in the email. We don't need any settings. We can just pull out the default email from the WordPress install. So let's just do the email notification. That's it, right? That's the MV plugin. So finally, we got to the point where we got to code some of the things. <laughs> and uh, this brings us to our next pro tip, which is code is just a byproduct of solving people's problems. That initial instinct of like, oh, we need to write a ton of code to solve people's problems is not uh, the right instinct. The right instinct is to remember that code is just a vessel for actually solving your user's problems. Your users probably don't care what the code looks like. They don't care if you have like, proper indentation or whatever. They just care that their problems are solved. And if you think about WordPress as a whole, WordPress's mission isn't to write the best and most robust and complicated PHP program there ever was. It's to bring voices to people who couldn't necessarily share their opinions or their content before. So Matt Mullenweg said this in a, uh, a video that I watched, which is our mission is to democratize publishing. That's what WordPress is all about. It's not about you know, writing a ton of PHP. Uh, so we decided, oh, this is it. This is the email notification. We're going to build this. And we set an ambitious goal to do this, where we started it on a Monday. We said we're going to have a plugin shipped by Friday installed on some sites. So that's what we did. Uh, we went and we finally got to listen to our music and put our headphones on and just concentrate and go into the cave and we did that. And this is the initial version that we shipped. And if you notice, it's full of a ton of bugs. So uh, that avatar in the top, it's supposed to be pulled from your Gravatar email or your Gravatar uh, avatar. We didn't do that. We just static coded it because it was too much work and we were going to miss our deadline. So we just dropped in an image. And then this was caused by a bunch of HTML errors where that's like a bad link. And then we had that like messed up padding in there. But the point was we shipped this and we gave it to a bunch of people. We gave the actual zip file and said, hey, go and manually install the zip file on your site. And people did it. And they were super pumped up because when we said to them, hey, remember that problem you were discussing with us like a couple weeks ago and you said, oh, wouldn't it be awesome? We built that for you. And they actually installed it, which validated our, oh, I messed it up. So anyway, back to these bugs. Uh, this is one of my other favorite startup quotes, which is, <coughs> if you were not embarrassed by the first version of your product, uh, you launched too late. And the point, the crux of this quote, which I think is important, is that you know, like we often get obsessed with like, oh, it needs to be perfect, it needs to be perfect. I just need to add this one more feature. No one's going to want to use it. And that's actually not the case. We gave that buggy version of the plugin to people, and they used it, and they liked the notifications. Uh, so yeah, Reid Hoffman's the founder of LinkedIn. Uh, this is a great, great quote to keep asking yourself and reminding yourself of. Um, so uh, going back to the lead-in story, uh, we had our assumption, which was people would install our plugin to track their visitors. And we were able to validate that because when we sent that plugin, people installed it. We got five installs and we got, I think, our first lead notification through one of those installs in the first 24 hours. Uh, so now that we had our five installs, we said, oh, we need to scale this up. So we sent out uh, emails to the rest of our list, right? And we actually had built a list of you know, a couple dozen people at this point by just talking to those Reddit users and those Facebook users and the cold emails we did. And we were able to say, hey, uh, we built that plugin solving that problem that you wanted, here it is, right? And in these emails, we asked, oh, can we talk to you more to figure out what we should do next? And we had to talk to people more, which uh, for me, at least, like I'm super introverted most of the time, is kind of painful to like hop on the phone and talk to people in person, kind of stinks, right? This is how I feel. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that communicating with your customers is your compass for building a plugin. It's really easy, like we've been saying this whole time, to just go and build something without talking to anyone. But if you actually talk to people and get their feedback throughout the process, you're able to write the ship and course correct so you don't end up on the other side of the world. You end up where you're supposed to be, right? So uh, that's what we did. We just said, oh, we want to make sure our compass is always calibrated correctly. So we just opened up the floodgates for communication with our customers. 
So this is a sample email that we send out whenever someone installs the plugin and goes through our onboarding process and gives us their email. Uh, it just automatically goes out. The most important part is in bold here, which is why did you install Lead-In and how are you hoping it'll help your business? And by asking that question, uh, I think we've sent out over 600 of these emails so far. We've received 75 responses where people actually give us their feedback and they're like, oh, yeah, I installed it to solve this problem. My client installed, yeah, my client asked me to solve this problem for you, for you and your plugin is like super easy to install and it does it for me. Uh, and with that feedback, we just get conversations going and hop on the phone with people and ask them, oh, well, what should we add to it? What do you want, what do you want next for it, right? Um, and then another thing we do is we try to send out updates for our plugin whenever we launch a new version. So I think like a lot of plugin developers will just launch a new version in the repo and then move on to the next thing. It's actually really important to tell your customers what you build for them, right? And we also keep track of every feature suggestion that someone gives to us. Uh, in Trello, we add a list of people for the specific people who ask for that feature and we personally email them with these updates and they're super pumped up and then they're like, it builds a ton of goodwill, right? Another thing we do is we have live chat on our site. This is Snap Engage, it takes like two minutes to install. Uh, and this pops up on the site whenever someone's on it for more than like 30 seconds or something with our face and says, hey, how can we help you? And this is another great vessel for getting people to talk to us. And a lot of people just come on, they're like, oh, I was checking this out. Does it do this? Does it do that? Does it do this? Um, we get to answer their questions, get more feedback, and then other people get really jazzed up and give us more uh, information on what we should build next. It's super helpful. Uh, we actually cataloged all of the feedback we got from those first emails, the blog post updates, and these, uh, these chats in an Evernote shared notebook between the two of us. And whenever we uh, you know, aren't sure like exactly what we should build next, we just go through that notebook and we say, oh, here's a pattern. Everyone wants like a MailChimp sync for their subscribers for our plugin. Let's let's build that, right? Um, so we eventually got into this loop where we would listen to people, we would analyze all the feedback, all the feedback that they're giving to us, uh, and look for patterns, and then we would take those patterns and actually build it, and then we would deliver it to them and tell them about it, and then we would ask them for uh, more advice and do it all over again, right? Listen, <laughs> listen, analyze, build, and deliver. Uh, and this feedback loop, you actually want to get through it as fast as possible because it's the way you can iterate and actually make sure you're building something that people want. So I think we launched the first version of the plugin in the beginning of uh, December or like late. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So. After we did that initial sprint, we shipped the first version on people's sites in the beginning of December, and we got our first 100 installs all manually. So we weren't in the repo at all, we would just send people a zip file. Uh, and we made it to 100 installs by just doing that loop of listening, analyzing, building, and learning. And through doing that loop, we realized, oh, those so assumptions that we nixed out in the beginning or those features that we uh, decided not to build, people actually did want them inside of WordPress. So we built the leads list, we built the timeline so you could click in and see all the different sessions people have, right? But we didn't jump the gun and build those things. We actually validated that people wanted them and kept getting that, iter uh, that iterative communication. Uh, so yeah, eventually, we got to 100 installs, which brings us to our pro tip number seven, which is build a plugin that 100 people love. Don't you know? say I need to build a plugin that a for a million people. I need to build a plugin for 100,000, 10,000, 1,000. Just focus on getting the first 100. Because getting the first 100, although it seems easy, is actually super, super hard. It took us like four months, right? We learned a ton, but it was a ton of work and it was pretty tiring, but we eventually got there. And then getting to the next order of magnitude 1,000 was a whole lot easier because we focused on getting to that first uh, 100. So now Nelson uh, said this earlier, we're over 5,000 installs. Uh, we officially launched in the repository on March 12th. Um, I think I did the math out the other day and we've grown like 1,000% in the last three months, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, and to put this uh, progress in perspective, I ran a bunch of reports on the WordPress repo and I found out that actually uh, only 41% of WordPress plugins have more than 1,000 downloads in the repo. So 
59% of all plugins ever made never get a thousand people using them, which is kind of a bummer because people put like their heart and their sweat into these things and then no one actually uses them. Uh, so also in comparison for our cohort, uh, which is the same, the plugins that launched on the same exact day as us, uh, we have the most downloads with uh, over 5,000. And the other interesting thing about this graph is that second dot right there, kind of the other outlier, does the same exact thing as one of the features of our plugin. Uh, so that's kind of like, that's kind of telling that both of our plugins are actually solving people's problems and they're downloading them and they're probably telling their friends about them and we're getting some referral traffic, right? So, uh, yeah, basically, hopefully this talk uh, helped you kind of figure out what to build and how to build it. Um, you know, and we're lucky that we're on the right path and we're getting there. We're still constantly learning and figuring everything out, but we've been able to get here uh, because we started with people and not products. Uh, we realized people are nice when you're trying to solve their problems. We didn't underestimate simplicity and built a simple first version, and we looked for extreme reactions on what people actually wanted or what they didn't want. And then we remembered that code is just a byproduct of solving people's problems, and the code doesn't actually matter. And we let customer communication be our compass while, during, throughout this whole process, and we focused on getting just that first 100 people so that we could set ourselves up for success on the next 1,000, 10,000, hopefully like a million someday, we don't know. Um, yeah, so uh, Nelson and I are hoping that by sharing these lessons and answering people's questions, uh, feel free to email us anytime. My email is Andy at LeadIn. That uh, people won't just dive in and they'll just code all the things. You'll learn how to learn all the things instead, right? You want to learn what to build by talking to people so that you can actually build something that people want. Thanks. Any questions? So I'll start over here, then over there. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of process, I think you know it's 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 pretty well known. It's fine. My question is more from the business point of view. Um, when you start asking those questions, you, you you have very few responses. Then you basically you call your own set of clients, and then what are you really building? Are you building? something, it's a product that took over your, your back end because you haven't answered those questions and all your clients have the same problem or you know similar problems or problems that they would like you, you to, to uh, respond? Or are you really building something that has a much bigger audience because it resonates further out? So, uh, to paraphrase, just so I can make sure I understand, are, are you saying that you have a couple clients that you solve the same problems for, and then there might be a larger part of the community that also has those same problems? Is that what you're saying? But it's a little bit incestuous, right? Uh, incestuous? Did I hear you? Because you, you, I mean, you are solving one, one set of things that, let's say, a problem that is common to a particular population and going around and around sort of refining the solution how much is that a universal solution? How much that it can be used as a as a, a step point for a, a larger um, business proposition? Right. So, okay, I, I think I understand. Uh, so, in my experience with products, most companies don't uh, have a problem with um, uh, targeting a market that's too big. They actually need to target a market that's smaller, right? So if you just try to say like, oh, I'm going to build uh, software for teachers, let's say, and you try to target every type of teacher, like a college professor, a high school teacher, an elementary school teacher, special ed, whatever, uh, that's probably going to kill you because you end up going to building this product that does nothing really well for one group of people. Uh, you're actually better off just focusing on the one niche. So actually being niche focused is a good thing in the beginning because you solve it, the problem really, really well for that small group, and then you can add more features that expands it out into the next group and expands it out into the next group. And hopefully you're growing your business and your revenue stream or you know, basically your sustainability as you go. Did that answer your question? Or? No, I mean, it, it, it's a view. I'm, I'm trying to, to, you know, to, to learn more and more in terms of the business part and trying to see what are the different ways of, 
of entering the market and being in the market and, and, and serving the, the users, the clients. Yeah, I mean, so we get, so those first hundred people, like we actually fit, like emailed them personally, right? So like we said, like they had our email address, they talked to us, we had talked to a bunch of them on the phone already, uh, in interviews, uh, we, you know, we had you know, support links in the product because we had those all those different channels of communication open. We got to hear a lot from people. Like if there's not a day goes by when I don't at least get an email from a customer. Right in the past nine months, that has not happened yet. I don't think so. Like we're constantly hearing from people. We're constantly getting support tickets and emails. So, I mean, that's how we knew, right? Because we are actually actually we weren't in that cave just building. We were actually out there. You know, we were available for people to talk to us. You know, we also kept track of all the feedback in Evernote, and there's like a little counter in the top of Evernote, and that just kept creeping up, creeping up, and uh, you know, you just tag it like good feedback, bad feedback, um, and the good feedback column was always higher than the bad feedback column. Uh, yeah. Does that mean you don't put any uh, analytics in the plugin for yourself? Uh, do we, you, are, so is, is, your, is your analytics just download or do you actually put a, a backdoor that's giving you some information from the user? Uh, I mean, we have uh, analytics in the plugin and we have that on our WordPress uh, repository directory right now. Um, yeah, just to keep track, it's all just like anonymous stuff. But I mean, like one of the hard prop, or one of the issues with WordPress, not issues, but hard things as a developer is that, you know, you want to make sure that you actually are building something good for people. Uh, and it's really hard just to do that blindly. Uh, and you end up just changing the product so when it gets used, you get some analytics. Yeah, just like our people using the plugin, basically. It's like nothing crazy. But that's a lot more than just downloads. Um, uh, yeah. To know that people are using it. Right, yeah. Yep. So how does this tie into HubSpot, or do you sell a pro version of this? Or like, what, where's the money, I guess, is what I'm kind of wondering. Like, yeah, when we started, like I said, that, that was literally all we had. Go build WordPress software. We'll figure out the money thing later. We're still kind of figuring it out. Uh, we're starting a pro version like for developers and agencies right now. We're trying to spin that up right now. If there's any developers here who want to check this stuff out, leadin.com slash VIP. Uh, so yeah, it, like, like, like we said, it's an experiment. So this might be a failure at the end of the day, but we don't know. We're experimenting and figuring it out. Has HubSpot given you any feedback at all? Yeah, I mean, we meet with them. We work in HubSpot. We're technically HubSpot employees. But, I mean, we operate almost independently. We're very autonomous. Uh, we do, like, report to people. But, uh, like, once or twice a week, nothing crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly just guidance. It's not like, oh, go do this, go do that. It's go listen to your users and do what they want. It doesn't matter for us. With what you've done with your process here, has HubSpot taken some of your process and implemented it into the other units? Uh, I mean, we're, like our team is just two people right now and we're really focused on just making this product uh, grow. So we haven't tried to you know, actively roll back in some of the learnings for us. Um, I mean, I don't know what the future holds. Maybe it will roll back in, maybe it's not. But you know, like we're just so strapped uh, doing like our own customer support, our own development, our own design, our own growth that, you know, we're just focusing on our own uh, our own issues right now. It's not too dissimilar though yeah. with the way other teams work. I mean, we're, ours is the way we work is specifically built for two people. Yeah. But the way, I mean, the HubSpot as a whole usually operates fairly similarly, just at a bigger scale. Yeah, so yeah, so there's 
but I think it was twofold. Like one, the market opportunity. There's a lot of people who want HubSpot type functionality, but it's way too expensive for them. Uh, like HubSpot has done a great job, like uh, kind of teaching everyone about inbound marketing and all this great new way to do marketing. But there's huge segments of the market where it's just like, I can't spend $4,000 to get spun up on HubSpot, you know, especially if they've never used inbound marketing and like they don't necessarily believe it or know that it's going to work yet. So I think part of it's that uh, they, there's kind of this market there that they see they want to get into. And there's also, we're not the first experiment at HubSpot. There's also a product called Signals, which had started the exact same way we did. And that went really well. So I think they were more willing to try other experiments in a bunch of different areas. So Yeah, yeah I mean, I think no the overall goal for HubSpot is just to bring the inbound methodology to as many people as possible, which is basically like, instead of just doing giant like a giant marketing campaign, like actually tailor your marketing campaign to each individual, um, you know, so they actually get marketing that they want <laughs> instead of just this like cookie cutter marketing. And, you know, using WordPress as a platform and building a free plugin that just is like really easy to use and simple, does a great job of that. Yeah. How many of these lessons did you learn for HubSpot? Um, that's a great question. Um, I mean, at my startup, I learned a lot of the lessons. I also did a lot of things wrong, too. Um, I mean, I think, like, there's kind of this growth that happens as, like, a first-time entrepreneur where you have no idea what you're doing and you're just, like, taking in all the inputs, right? Uh, and you're, like, learning and trying to figure out what's good and what's, what's not so good. And then once you have all those lessons, like you've been to a lot of meetups and talked to a lot of advisors and stuff, you kind of internalize all that stuff and you say, okay, I just need to like focus on customers, solving customers' problems and building product. Like uh, a lot of the other stuff doesn't really matter. And you have to learn that stuff first. And then once you get into that, that phase, you start learning the lessons of like, I need to iterate as fast as possible and like use Lean Startup. Um, I mean, I learned the Lean Startup just by doing it at my startup and then applied it to this uh, loop as well. But I also learned a ton doing this too over the first like six or seven months, just things I didn't realize. Yeah. What was the chat thing you had uh, that you were collecting feedback on? Snapping gauge. Snapping yeah, we actually put it in the plugin too. So if you click like contact us, the chat thing pops up. Huh? Yeah. Snap engage. There's a few other too. Uh, there's a few others like Olark. Uh, I think there's another one like Zopum Groove. They're live chat. Common now. Just a oh, live chat. Uh, they're pretty common. Our our users love that they can just get chat support from us really easily, and a lot of them just come onto our site and wait for the pop up to pop up, uh, so that they can get feedback. Or just um, talk to us. Yeah, so. we're really nice guys. So. We just have it on whenever we're at our computers. And like we have it set up so if we walk away for more than a minute, it like automatically shuts off. It just says out to lunch Yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't pop up. Oh, yeah. Well, if we're not online and you press uh, chat, or I think it says help, it'll pop up a email form. It's like a message. So it just sends in a message email. I mean, I, um, we probably get like two or three each a day. Yeah. It's nothing oh, crazy. It's manageable. Yeah, it's, it's manageable right now. And we use another... Uh, Boston-based support ticketing system called Help Scout, and that's how we keep track of uh, between the two of us who responded to what email. It keeps it all on the thread, so you can see it really easily. Uh, and the Snap Engage Help Scout one-two punch works really well for us. Cool. We'll be around too if you guys want to talk. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.